Hi, I'm Carla and this is Diesel. If you've been watching any of the videos in the Road to Rotator Recovery, that there is Onyx. <laughs> if you've been watching in the videos, the Road to Rotator Recovery playlist, then you'll know that I'm now nine and a half months post-op. I had shoulder surgery and I'm also recovering from a frozen shoulder. So this is just where I'm at in terms of my yoga practice. I thought I would just record and work through it with you. When you come to a seated position, I'm able to get my sacrum into the body, but my thigh is sloping down. If you dump the sacrum back and you're unable to get onto the buttock bones, then take a blanket for support. And that also brings the thighs a little bit more parallel to the floor. With the hands next to you, press into the fingertips, lift up tall, hands in the prayer position. And you be here with your own breath, with your body. You can make your dedications for your practice here or any chanting that you do in your practice, do it here. Yeah? with your breath. Feel how each inhalation touches the asana. Feel the power in each exhalation. Throughout the practice, I'm not going to give too many instructions. So keep coming back to your breath. Keep paying attention to any messages and feedback your body is giving you. On an exhalation, drop your chin down. Opening up your heart from the breastbone across the collarbones. Releasing the head down, stretch across the back of the neck, across the top shoulders. And just take a moment to salute the divinity within. Release the hands into the lap, lift the head up. So coming to Adho Mukha Virasana, I am still working on full mobility. I'm still working on strength. So in all these poses, work to your capacity only. Anamukha Virasana is a wonderful pose to stretch out the back. If you can rest your head, you do. Otherwise, take support wherever is necessary. And that openness in the armpit. Really nice to try and get that here. And then coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana, turning the toes. And it's the first one, so I don't bother with getting the heels down. I'll try and again get that openness in the armpit because that's what I'm working on. You might be working openness in the knees, strength in the arms and the hands. This pose gives so much. So just be in Adho Mukha Svanasana and let the pose evolve. 
And whenever you need to rest, coming back to the previous pose, Adho Virasana. Otherwise, be in Adho Mukha Svanasana. Keep coming to the breath and the body, feeling the body using the breath to release areas of tension or where there's anything locked and unmoving. Anytime you need, when the body feels fatigued, just coming back either onto all fours into Adho Kavirasana, and if it's a restorative Adho Kavirasana, rest the elbows on the floor, rest the head, rest the shoulders and the neck. So especially if you're recovering from an injury or working with an injury, work to where you can build up strength, you can work into your mobility, but don't, in my opinion, don't force it. So you're trying to find that balance between where you're getting that um, progress versus working and overworking it too hard and then setting yourself back. Shvanasana. As you get more and more comfortable in the pose, See, can you take the feet back? I remember Raya always saying, take a nice big downward dog, not a chihuahua. And just hang out in this big, lovely Adho Kashvanasana. Keeping the legs and abdomen strong, come to the plank position. Shoulders are over the wrists, thighs are strong, knees are firm, abdomen is pushing back. As you push the abdomen back, don't round the back, keep the chest extending forward also so that there's a balance. Breathe. Whenever you need to release, release into downward facing dog. Or into Adho Kavirasana. From Adho Kavirasana, stepping forward, coming to Ardha Uttanasana. You're drawing up the knees. You're not just jamming the back of the knee open, but draw up the knees to keep the legs strong. And then extend the sides of the body. You can either take the hands down or you can have them on bricks if Arda and half pose is where you're working. Because I'm working on shoulder mobility, I'm doing the crossing of the forearms and opening the armpit. The legs strong and the sacrum coming into the body. And then coming to Tadasana. From Tadasana, I am still working on getting this movement. Utita Hastasana to feel comfortable. So just working a little bit on that. Keeping the elbow firm. And then also turning the palms up. So this is still a little bit painful on the right side. 
Also bringing the arms up, seeing if I can get it a little bit behind the ear, which is not quite there on the right side, but is getting there. And then, of course, trying to Let's see if I can get that mobility in the shoulder joint. So here, Gomukhasana prep. I'm turning that tricep in, revolving the bicep out. And I'm really quite happy with where that's come. And then more of Utita Hastasana. Just seeing if I can make the muscles attach to the bone. And work the muscles of the arm. Just feel that the joint is stable. Elbow joint is firm. And then Pashima Namaskarasana. Uh, it's not doing too great, but it will come. And here, yeah, trying to get the front shoulder back and the elbow down. So without throwing the abdomen and the thighs forward. And releasing. Urbahastasana. Uttanasana. From Uttanasana. Adumukashvanasana. From Adumukashvanasana. Urbamukashvanasana. Push into the hands. Turning the feet, Hadumukashvanasana. Stepping the right foot forward, coming to Trikonasana. Bending the knee, taking the arm up and over the head, Utita Pajra Konasana. Coming back down, straighten the right leg, turn the back foot a little bit more. Come to a nice wide Pajvotanasana. Take bricks if you need for the hands. Because you're nice and wide, walk the hands forward, just stretching the spine, stretching the legs. So most of the work I've been doing has been opening the armpit just to get that full range of motion. But keeping the legs strong, the spine long, we can walk the hands back into more of the complete pose. If you do that, don't close off the chest and the front body. In Pajvottanasana, you're squaring off the hips. From here, bend the right knee. Step up into Virabhadrasana one. Turn the hips to face the right knee. Keep the left leg strong. Yeah, you're trying to take the arms behind the ears. Keep descending that right buttock 
down, but lifting the right side of the abdomen up. Release down. See now, you're able to get more length in the side body, more openness in the armpit and the chest region. Are the heels beginning to descend? Don't. So resist the temptation to drop the arches. Nice Tadasana feet, strong Tadasana legs, long Tadasana spine. If at any point you need to come to Adumoka Virasana, you do. Exhalations, bring the shoulder blades into the body to open the armpit chest, but keep the abdomen in the front of the ribs back, especially if you're very flexible. Keep lifting the thighs from the knee, draw up the knee, lift the thigh, and move the front thigh back. Step the left foot forward. From this lunge position, come to Trikonasana. If you're unable to take the arm up, you can keep it in the waist as I've done. And also just begin to see, does it come? Listen to your body. If there's pain, discomfort, back off, give it a chance to get strong. A little bit everyday perseverance, that will be key. Utita Pajra Konasna. Keep working to get that plumb line from the outer ankle right to the fingertips. All the joints aligning in a straight line. Release down. Straighten the front leg into a nice wide Ajvotanasana. Turn the back foot in, turn the hips. Right hip has to come towards the front of the mat. The left leg sucks up from the knee, move the hip back. Bending the front knee, keep the back foot strong. Come to Virabhadrasana number one. Come down, step back to Adomuka Shwanasa. Step forward, come to Arda Uttanasana. Strong legs, long spine, Padasana. Coming to Tadasana in the middle of the mat. Fingertips to the chest. So I jump cautiously with the arms, but you should fling the arms before. I just don't have that capability just yet. 
firm legs, long spine, approach Trikonasana from open hip position. Keep the muscles of the thighs and the arms hugging the bone. Maintain the extension of the spine, shoulders away from the ears. Any point, that top arm can come down. Right hip in and turning from the right groin to the left. Strong legs. Long spine, inhale. Turn the feet. If you need to rest the arms, the shoulders, bring the hands into the waist. Rest bone has to lift, broadness across the collarbones as you extend into the arms. Coming to Pajva, keep that broadness across the collarbones, the shoulders away from the ears as you come into Trikonasana to the left. So here I'm unable to keep that right arm there just yet. I'll just work into it slowly. Shoulders, don't let them come up to the ears. Keep that openness in the chest. And you want to extend across the chest to the wrists. Extend the legs, extend the spine. You're able to look up. Coming up, turn the feet, step or jump the feet to Tadasana, catching the breath in Tadasana. So now again, coming to the side, taking a brick if you need, make sure there's space, either step or jump the feet apart. We're going to come to, through Virabhadrasana number two. Are you keeping that movement from the buttock? to the bent knee and keep that shin perpendicular to the floor. Shoulders over the hips, you're not extending. And you turn the head, keep opening that left side of the chest, keep the left leg strong. You need to have a rest you do, otherwise coming kind of half Utita Pajva Konasana, step forward with the right arm, and the left leg and coming up. So because the front right shoulder doesn't quite lift for me here, I'm struggling to open the chest, but you open the chest, turn the body from right to left. Legs and arms working. When you're ready, you bend that right knee so that you can control your step back. Come through Trikonasana, the triangle pose. Lift up, turn the feet. Come back to Tadasana. So coming back to Tadasana gives you a chance to quieten the throat and the neck, relax the shoulders. Any areas that you held tense or tight, notice them. Exhale, let go. Notice where you're holding the breath. Can you catch your breath? Also gives you a chance to do a wardrobe adjustment. <laughs> Stepping the feet apart, extending the arms out, Utita Padahastasana, turning the feet, extending into the right arm and leg, bend to get a 90 degree turn. When you feel ready, come forward into Ardha Chandrasana. I get a pain in the deltoid still. If I hold that for too long, listen to your own body.
when you've been there, control that bent knee to step back. Don't think about stepping back. Think about bending and controlling that knee. From Trikonasana, inhale, come up. Back to Tadasana, jumping or stepping the feet together. I'm unable to do Shirshasana yet. So I do the prep of Shirshasana. Then coming into the prep. If you are following this video along as a class and you don't generally do Shirshasana, then don't do it now. Um, rather just lie with your feet and legs up the wall. So this triangle position of the forearms, I'm battling with this external rotation. So I'm just working on the prep. I'm trying to keep the elbows from splaying and pressing the center forearm into the floor to lift the shoulders. I haven't gone up yet because I just don't feel there's still pain in that joint in the top shoulder. So I don't feel confident that in this position I should go up just yet. So I don't. Have I ever been able to go into Shishasana this way? I cheat a little bit because the elbow is not quite in, but hey. I do want to be able to still feel comfortable on my head, so this is how I've been practicing. Because I've only just begun the practice, I've been building up slowly. I'm just coming down when I feel that the head is getting heavy or that the arm has had enough work. Taking time just to be in an Adho Virasa position where my head Neck and shoulders are relaxed. Right. I've also been working a little bit on abdominals. If you have back issues, you do need to be cautious with these. You can try by keeping the knees a little bit bent when you begin them. And if you need, you can take a blanket underneath the head. So Urva Plazarita Padasana, where I'm just warming up, working with the legs moving down.
can just rest whenever you need to. Relax the abdomen and the legs whenever you need to. And then if you've got a few more in you, you begin again, but notice, are you tightening the head, the neck and the throat? Do you need a blanket for support there? If you want to intensify it, you can take the arms out to the sides or even arms over your head. Oh, okay, there's support. So if you can take your arms over your head, you can. Otherwise, keep the hands underneath the buttocks, especially if you have any back issues. Taking the legs to 30 degrees, to 60 degrees, to 90 degrees, back to 60, back to 30, and then either hovering over the floor or resting all the way down, and then just keep going. You can either rest in Shavasana or when you're finished with those arms over your head and just really stretch. So if you can take your hands to the floor over your head, then great. If you can't, then use support like what I've got. So even this is quite painful. <laughs> okay, coming up. So if you do have inversions as part of your practice, obviously Sarvangasana is a wonderful and almost compulsory <laughs> inversion to finish off with if you do inversions. And you can take different supports. I haven't been able to get my hands in a strap behind my back. I don't find much comfort in the classic shoulder balance yet. So I either do it in the chair or I do it um, in Salamba Sarvangasana. Usually I would have my feet coming to a wall. So this is one of the few ways we have found comfort in doing Salamba Sarvangasana. It's kind of a build up to Niralamba Sarvangasana. Mm. It always does come in when you're vulnerable. Course you do your classic sarvangasana or whatever alternate support you generally do in your practice. Classic 
we take the arms behind the back. I'm still working on getting that. Holding it all as long as you can, release out of it. Let's rest the head and the shoulders either on the same level of support or the head a little bit higher than the shoulders before coming out of Sarvangasana. So, whenever I've done abdominals, I do like to finish off with a nice abdominal stretch and then a twist, cross bolsters, either taking your bolsters across like so. We're using blankets and a shoulder balance foam with your bolster. In this cross bolster position, it's also a wonderful alternative to shoulder balance if you don't do shoulder balance, but getting the shoulders on the floor, this openness in the chest, the chin to the chest is the Jalandarabandha position and this openness in the abdomen and the hip flexors, the front thighs is a really lovely release for after um, abdominals. If it catches your back, either bend the knees or take your feet up on a support. Relax the legs and the arms and just take a few breaths here and close the eyes. Once you've released for a few breaths, bend your knees, roll off the support and come up. And then taking a bolster just for a nice releasing twist. This also helps just to relax the abdomen, especially after the abdominal work. So the feet to the left, the right buttock is facing the bolster using your hands like chaturanga, let that left hip come up, turn the abdomen from the left to the right, the sacrum comes down and you rest the left side of your face and ear on the bolster. Just make sure the flesh of the buttocks isn't trapped, that you're turning completely and then get comfortable, relax the arms, hug your bolster, relax your shoulders.
Push yourself up and then either just swing your knees over to the other side so that your left hip faces the bolster. Your right ankle is in the left arch and you're turning to get your right side of the head on the floor. Relax the shoulders, relax the neck, relax and just be with the breath each exhalation. You're just getting that release, that gentle twist. Again, to come up, your hands are under your shoulders. Push yourself up. You can keep the bolster for under your knees. That will create some lengthening in the lumbar spine and also um, quietness in the abdomen. A nice soft blanket for the head is lovely. You're bringing the blanket to support the head and the neck. The bolster is under the middle of the knee so that it's centered at the back of the knee. Make sure the back of the waist is long, the skin across the shoulders is down and spread. Turn the bicep up and just relax the hands, extend the legs, roll the legs from inner thigh to outer thigh, relax the legs, the feet flop out to the sides. Relax the neck, the throat, the shoulder region. Keep the mouth quiet, the skin and the muscles of the face relaxed. Back of the neck is long. And just keep the skin from the forehead down the eyes, heavy so that the eyes are closed. The cheeks are releasing down, the jaw is away from the top jaw. Bottom jaw just completely relaxed. Just be in Shavasana. For as long as you have time for, or as long as your body feels you need. And if you're ready to get up, just bring the hands onto anywhere on the torso where it's comfortable. Connect with the breath. 
Inhaling as you stretch, taking the arms over your head. You all will sigh the breath out on the exhalation. And then bend the knees, roll onto the right side. Head cradled in the right arm. When the eyes feel ready to open, pushing into the hand coming up. Take a few moments in this upright position. With the hands in the prayer position, open your heart up to the hands. The eyes closed. Just put a small smile on your face. And with a sense of gratitude, just being thankful for the health and strength of the body. Despite all its scars, its injuries, its limitations. Feeling thankful for our practice. Namaste. Thank you. See you next time.